Hello boys and girls, this is Mr. Kizik. In this video, we're going to be looking at how do we determine in the coordinate plane what kind of quadrilateral we have. Um, as we've looked at before, we've utilized the coordinate plane to uh, uh, determine if something's a parallelogram, but now we're looking to see what kind of parallelogram it is. Okay. So, case one here, or before we even get to that, uh, there are two steps to follow to determine if it is a parallelogram. The first step is to uh, determine the length of the sides. And step two is then to determine the length of the diagonals. So in both cases here, what we're going to be utilizing is the distance formula. So there are four different cases you can have here. Case one is we can show that just the opposite sides are congruent, but the diagonals are not congruent. In the second case, we could prove that the opposite sides are congruent still, but then the diagonals are congruent. Case three, we could determine that um, all four sides are congruent, but the diagonals are not congruent. And then the last case basically says everything's congruent. So sides are all equal and diagonals are equal. So technically, what we have to do here is we have to utilize the distance formula six times for each different length. However, to help you guys out here a little bit, um, all of these uh, problems here that we're going to be doing, they will be parallelograms. So remember, uh, by definition, a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So technically, we don't need to check the opposite sides because they should be the same. We just need to check the consecutive sides. So I know it um, doesn't help too much, but uh, we'll be doing the distance formula four times instead of six. So let's look at the first one here. Just like what we did before, uh, you want to draw your figure. So you can have a visual representation. So you start at any corner and you go in a clockwise or a counterclockwise position. All right. Like I said, we know that the opposite sides will be congruent. We know A, B, and D, C will be the same and A, D, and B, C are the same because we're going to have at least a parallelogram. That's the whole point. Um, technically, like I said, you do all six, but because we will at least have a parallelogram, you only have to do the consecutive sides. So just like uh, um, before when we could pick sides, just pick a pair of consecutive sides. So let's just say I want to do A, B, and B, C. So I'd have to do the distance formula for A, B. So A, B equals the square root. Now the distance formula, it's subtracting the x's squared plus subtracting the y's. Negative 4 minus negative 2, which is really plus 2 squared. So I'm going to have um, the square root of 9 minus 8, 1 squared, 1. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 squared, 4. Square root of 5. And then we're going to do the same thing for BC. So the square root of... Uh, 8 minus 2 squared plus negative 2 minus negative 5 or negative 2 plus 5 squared. 8 minus 2 is 6 squared, 36. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3 squared, 9. Square root of 45. All right, so let's compare these, uh, these consecutive sides. These sides here are different. So if I look at the cases here, these right here, the cases three and four, means all sides have to be the same. So this figure is either going to be a par parallelogram or a rectangle. Again, we know A, B, and D, C are the same. If we did D, C, we should get square root five. But because these problems will be at least a parallelogram, we don't need to do that. So now, to determine which one of the two it's going to be, now i got to do the diagonals, A, C, and B, D. So again, i got to do the distance formula. 
AC is going to be uh, 9 minus 2 squared plus negative 4 minus negative 5 or negative 4 plus 5 squared. This is going to be 9 minus 2 is 7 squared 49. Negative 4 plus 5, 1 squared, 1 square root of 50. And then I do BD. Square root of, let's see, 8 minus 3 squared plus uh, negative 2 minus negative 7 or plus 7 squared. So 8 minus 3 is 5. 5 squared is 25 plus negative 2 plus 7 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So we get the square root of 50. So looking back at the cases here, remember we narrowed it down to 2, parallelogram, rectangle. Out of the 2 here, which one says diagonals are congruent? It would be rectangle here. So figure A, B, C, D is a rectangle. So that's how you do these problems here. So let's look at another one. So number two, QRS, QRST. Draw it here. QRST. Now let's say, I don't know, you want to do instead, just to mix up here, let's say you want to do TS and QT. So I had to find the distance of QT. So that's going to be the square root of negative 2 uh, minus 1 squared plus negative 7 minus negative 9 or plus 9 squared. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 squared 9. Negative 7 plus 9 is 2 squared 4. So square root of 13. Now if I do TS, that's going to be the square root of 4 minus 1 squared plus negative 7 minus negative 9 or negative 7 plus 9 square. 4 minus 1, 3 squared 9, and then it's the same thing as before. So now since these consecutive sides are the same, what it's going to look at, Let's look to see. That means all four sides have to be the same. So that's either going to be a rhombus or a square. And now we're going to check the diagonals just to see um, which one it would be here. So I got to do QS, which is the square root of negative 2 minus 4 squared plus um, negative 7 minus negative 7, which is really plus 7 squared. So I'm going to have negative 2 minus 4, which is negative 6 squared is 36. And then this other part is going to be 0, so I get 6. And then I do RT. RT is going to be the square root of 1 minus 1 squared plus negative 5 plus 9 yeah negative, uh, 5 plus 9 squared so when I do that I got 1 minus 1 again is 0 um, and then plus and then negative 5 plus 9 which is going to be 4 squared 16 4 here the diagonals are different. So which one of these, remember the property of uh, these quadrilaterals, where the diagonal is different? That would be a rhombus. So figure QRST is a rhombus. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you determine what kind of quadrilateral you have in a coordinate plane. Numbers 3 and 4 and 5 are all the same concepts, so I'm not really going to go about um, looking at it here. So, what I would like you to complete for homework is on the homework page. I would like you to do, I'm sure there's problems there. Um, I'm just waiting for a load. More than likely, I think I want you to do all the homework, all the problems on the homework page. Yeah. I want you to do numbers. 
one, two, three, and four for homework. So just follow along with what we did here and all should be good. Remember, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email me or just you know send me a message. This is Mr. Kiesick signing.